And three, two, one. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Do any of you think white people are sometimes discriminated against? This happens in a systemic way on our most elite college campuses. If you make a decision based on the color of someone's skin, isn't that racist? No, you're trying to create an opportunity. They're not hiring based on talent. So what do we do about heart surgeons, airplane pilots? How far do we want to go with this? Let's do it. Welcome everybody to episode one or episode uno of Fun Times with Tyler Fisher. I'm your host, Tyler Fisher. Very good to see you. Look at you looking very nice today. You hope you're feeling nice today. So this is very exciting. Uh, I used to do a podcast in the um, Call It Tyler Fisher show. But uh, now... This is very exciting. I'm saying this live on the national television podcast, wherever you're watching things. I am actually coming out as uh, ethnically fluid. So what does that mean? I know there's a lot of new terms and genders and all these sorts of things. So some people, if they say they are uh, they are a gender fluid uh, or non-binary, non-bi- non-binary, well, I am a non-binary uh, as far as my ethnicity. So basically, what that means is my ethnicity will, um, it's fluid, it changes. And so that's what this podcast would be. It would be me exploring all the different parts of who I am. And that's basically what we're doing here. So because if someone can have, if someone could bend the reality of biology, right, then why can't I bend the reality of my eth- ethnical Ethnic biology, and, you know, and and you know, I I I think I'll even you know perhaps ban 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 the binary of time, you know, you know, I I, I identify as all different ethnicities, and I I even I identify as people people who li- 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 lived in different times. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, the show's back. The podcast is back. I had. What do we do? 55, 54 episodes of uh, the Tyler Fisher show. I've changed the show. It's now called Fun Times. And that's basically because uh, I want to set the tone of having a good time here. So I'm going to do a solo episode and then I'm going to do a guest. And then a solo episode and then a guest. Then a solo episode. Then I'll go to jail for telling jokes. Then a solo episode. uh, Then I'll be arrested for making parody videos. Then a solo episode. So if you haven't seen the show, if you don't know who the hell I am, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tyler Fisher. I am a comedian. I'm an actor. And I make content and make all sorts of silly videos on the internet. I do stand-up comedy here in New York City at the Comedy Cellar every single night. And I'm touring the country as well. And while, while we're talking about that, let's just shout out some of these upcoming dates. So my upcoming stand-up comedy shows... And if you want to find out if I'm funny or you like my stand-up, watch my special called The New Normal. It's on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, Upcoming shows, Brooklyn, New York, will be on April 19th, 8 p.m. All tickets are at TylerFisher.com. June 24th, I'll be uh, doing a comedy festival in Tennessee called Comedy at the Caverns. The comedy festival from the caverns. It's in a freaking cave. It looks really cool. So uh, I won't do a long set on that. I'll just be doing, you know, 12 minutes or something with other comics. But if you're in Tennessee and you want to come to that and you also want to see me do a long set, I will be back in Nashville at Zany's on July 16th, Sunday, July 16th. And the day before that, on the 15th, I'll be at the Stardome in Hoover, Alabama. And on June 30th, I will be in Austin, Texas at the Vulcan Gas Company. All those tickets, grab them now, okay? Don't wait. I'm a wait guy. Uh, Not fat, I'm just, I wait a long time to do things, and then it's too late, okay? So please go get your tickets now. Also, if you like my comedy, if you liked my podcast and plan on liking this one, 
please support me on Locals. I'm switching from Patreon to Locals. I was on Patreon, but Locals gave me a call, and uh, we talked on the phone, and they're just awesome, and it feels like a better fit for me. I, no, you know, no, no hard feelings about Patreon, and I appreciate everybody who has supported me on Patreon. You've kept my career going, quite literally. It's the only uh, <laughs> consistent income I've had for the last couple of years during this wild, wild ride of comedy and censorship and and uh, pandemics from wet markets. So Locals, that is tylerfisher.locals.com right here on the screen. And I'm going to be putting up longer episodes of the podcast, so uh, my full episodes will be up there. Maybe, be patient with me, please. Come on, man, be, be, be patient. I'll do my best to do the thing I can with the thing. Lo- local people. You know, I, I grew up around locals. And my my grand, great-grandfather was a transgender local, local person. So come on, give me a break. Jack. I will put bonus portions of the podcast on locals. So the last part of the podcast... All of this is going to be on YouTube, on Rumble, and then the last portion will y'all head over to Locals. Look, it's five freaking dollars, okay? Uh, five dollars a month is the lowest you can pay, and you'll get the extra parts of the podcast. You'll get bonus comedy. You'll see all my videos first. I mean, for example, for example, I just put up a a parody of um, the trans man doing a Bud Light advertisement. I don't know if you saw that. Hey guys, it's Taylor. It's day six of girlhood and look who I got a new sponsor. Look at this cool Bud Light tower they sent me. Bud Light sent me so much cool stuff because they're so inclusive. Look at this Bud Light tank top. And I've obviously been drinking a lot of Bud. I also might be pregnant, don't tell anyone. They also sent me this, check this out. Ready? They sent me a Bud plug. Look at this, ooh, la la la. It's gonna get me nice and loose and relaxed. I'll put it right in my Heine can. <laughs> now for the best part. At Kid Rock sh- shot all the beer cans and uh, people are up in arms about, literally up in arms about this this uh, Dylan Mulvaney doing a Bud Light ad or whatever, which I don't really give a crap about. The only thing I really care about is um, that I they aren't gonna give me an ad, so... I can't get any sponsorships, so I I do parodies of uh, all sorts of stuff. I make fun of everything. So, you know, that video got a million views on Facebook, and then Facebook took it down. They said it was uh, some bull crap about sexual something or other, but hey, you can go on there and tell people to watch your OnlyFans porn. You can tell kids you just chopped, lobbed off your titties. And how fucking great your life is. Um, but a parody, a pretty close parody, uh, was removed. So I had to spend half the day pleading with Facebook and begging them to put the video up. Thank God they put it back up. Uh, TikTok won't even let me upload the video. That's how far it's gone on TikTok. They won't even let me upload the video. They just know. They're like, I, I, we just have a feeling. Oh, we just have a feeling. It's not going to be very good. So they don't let me upload it. And uh, my point is that on Locals, everything will be up there. I get messages every day, nonstop. They'll go, where is this video? It was on Instagram. Now why is it on here? Why well, I got to go over here? Why well, I got to go over here? Baby, 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 baby. That's all, folks. Just please join Locals. And uh, $20 and up, you can uh, message me. I get Probably thousands of messages at this point every month. I can't keep up. I'm trying to. My little fingers. Look at my little, look at my little uh, click grabbing claws here. They just can't type anymore. So I can sit down at the computer. I can actually send you a proper message. You can tell me anything. Tell me your deepest, darkest thoughts. You can send me a sketch idea. Really anything. The world is your oyster. Um. So anyhow. I want to just give you an update for, especially for the people that used to watch the podcast. Uh, I think I haven't done one in about eight months. So last, last time we were doing this, I had just 
filmed a movie. I did a film with uh, with the Daily Wire called Terror on the Prairie, a Western film, and did the movie premiere starring Gina Carano. Please check out the film. It's on Daily Wire. It was a, it was a blast. So went to the movie premiere. Uh, so much has ha- has happened. Um, a lot of amazing stuff. Some tough stuff. Some amazing stuff. Uh, so then I put out my stand up comedy special, which is free on YouTube. And again, my next comedy special it'll be on Locals, so you'll get it early on Locals. Uh, I hope to film that over the summer. Put up the stand-up comedy special, spent a few months editing that thing, getting it online. Uh, Very proud of it. Um, uh, Hired a manager, John, who is the co-producer of this podcast, and I couldn't, I would not be here if it wasn't for John. Cannot tell you how amazing John is. So, So we've teamed up. He came here. He built this studio with me. I now have a co-producer of the podcast. I was doing everything alone. So I was I was filming all my videos, editing them, writing them, directing them, acting in them, uh, and then going off and doing stand-up at night. And I just couldn't do it anymore, which is why I took that break. But so much amazing stuff has happened, mostly because of you guys. Uh, man, got passed at the Comedy Cellar. There's, a, there's my first payment from the Comedy Cellar. 50 bucks, you know, I would do it for free because that club is so amazing. Um, that was a dream that I thought, you know, may have been passed. I wasn't sure if it was ever going to happen. And a fan of mine sent my video to the owner of the comedy club. We sat down, we had coffee, I auditioned, and I think I have now done so- over 300 shows there, maybe close to 500 shows uh, in the last five months, something like that, around 300, probably 400. So my point is not that you always have to have a point, but I just didn't stop. I kept going and uh, focused on my mission of just continuing to create stuff and, and, and let go of the result. And so much amazing stuff has happened. Um, launched a merchandise line. So you guys can, uh, Check it out at tylerfisher.com, but here we go. If you guys want to get boosted right there, let the world know. Stop, you know what I mean? Just let them know that you're a hero, okay? Let them know that you got warp speed right in your arm, right? Warp speed. Oh, you're warped up. You're so warped up. What else we got here? I've got a lot more on the website, but uh, this is maybe my favorite one. This is a big seller right here. Everything is racist. Because it is. Even you, even even this color, right? Everything's racist now, so stop fighting it and just wear it on your fucking shirt. You know, stop fighting it. Stop fighting your racism and your unconscious bias. You have so much unconscious bias, and you should unconsciously buy us a shirt. That's what you should do. TylerFisher.com. We toured, um, and, and then we launched the podcast. So this we've been working on for months, just figuring out. I'm not a tech guy, okay? I'm not a tech-savvy guy. If you noticed, a lot of my videos now are just this. This is it. I film like this. I put it online. I can't tell you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put up a picture of this room right now. John, I just had to call John and go, where do I put the plugs? We've already set the thing up. We've done a test, and I, I had to get him on FaceTime because I I don't know where to put the plugs, okay? I don't know where to put the plugs, which is more of an issue in my sexual life. So he's probably calling me right now going, do you even know what you're doing? Are you recording? I don't even know if I'm recording this. But, uh, all right, so... We're getting back into the swing of it. Um, what's going on? <laughs> uh, Trump. Is he going to jail? I don't know if he's going to jail. It's funny. I talk about this on stage and the crowd goes wild. And I just go, oh, so Trump got arrested. And people go, yeah, woo, they're so excited. They're so excited. But it's like, man, if you didn't get this guy in seven years, do you think 
You're going to get him now. If he goes to jail, by the way, he's going to make it sound cool. Love Trump or hate Trump. He's a marketing genius. He's not stupid. He's a marketing genius. He may be stupid in certain areas, as are all of us. But he's going to make it sound so cool. You know he is. So we're going to jail, right? Nobody goes to jail like me. Not even Al Capone couldn't do it. No, Al Capone couldn't do it. Not even El Chapo, right? Not even El Chapo. People underestimate the whisper of Trump. He really can, he can go big. He can go so big and get guttural, right? He gets so guttural, but he can also go like this, right? He can get soft. And he would be great at reading a bedtime story, right? Yes, he would. Yes, he would, right? We're going to sleep. But we're going to jail and no one does it like me. Look at these shackles. He's not even going to be able to do the full thing. He's going to be limited. Look at these shackles, right? Golden shack. Nobody wears shackles like me. We're making shackles great again, aren't we? They put me in a, we're going to woke jail. That's what they're doing. MSDNC knows they know what they're talking. They're putting me in woke jail. I got a rainbow jumpsuit on. Look at this. I got a rainbow jumpsuit with my pronouns listed right there. Donald, he, him. What is this? He, him. Everybody's fluid. Everybody's wet. What's going on? Everybody's soaking wet. They used to have a nice orange jumpsuit. No, you remember. John remembers. There's always a random guy, John, wherever he is, right? Right? Everybody knows. John, where's John? John knows what I'm talking about. You know about this. It used to be an orange jumpsuit like my skin, and now rainbow, rainbow. The gays are taking the rainbow. They've taken everything. They've taken parades. No, they've taken parades. They've taken twerking, right? They used to be for women. They've taken twerking, and they've taken the jumpsuit. And frankly, you remember they used to shave the whole head. They used to have you in jail and you were so bald. And now they just shave. Look at me. They shave the side of my head. I look like a lesbian Hitler. I look like a lesbian Hitler. Das ist nicht so good, right? Das ist nicht so good. What if Trump was <laughs> was German? So we're going to build Das Wall. We're build a, building Sea Dogs Wall. And Das Wall is going to be gratis. So good. The wall is going to be good. Right, Scheiser? Right, Scheiser. Nine. Vore kommen Sie. Right, vorher kommen Sie, John. Vore kommen Sie, John. Hamburg. John is coming from Hamburg. I don't even know, know any more German than that. But uh, my point is, he'll make it cool. And our two presidential candidates right now, one of them, this is wild. I mean, this is the greatest country in the world, and it is. And if you don't think so, do a semester abroad in North Korea. That That's what I think. If you hate this country, you should have to do a semester abroad in North Korea or in Afghanistan or Staten Island and then tell me how much you hate America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. No, yeah, well, we'll see if Kim Jong-un respects your bloody pronouns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 12 Rules for Communism, that's what you'll be doing, bucko. I also met Jordan Peterson. That was a crazy thing that happened uh, over the last couple months. I wasn't supposed to. I wasn't supposed to. I got word that he was uh, going to be a certain somewhere, and I made sure that myself was in the same place he was. And uh, I think, I don't know if it was his security guard or somebody was very upset that I was there. He tried escorting me out, and I was like, nope, I'm not leaving. I was with Gina Carano, and she was so sweet. She was like, you, you're you going to fucking meet him. And so she sat with me for like an hour, and we just waited. It was kind of stalking. It was stalking. And I met him, and I was uh, I was overclimbed. But uh, got to shake his hand and just say thank you. And, well, we both cried. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I cried on Dr. Phil probably from watching Jordan Peterson and having an example of uh, a man that's in touch with his emotions so no segues in the Tyler Fisher show or fun times but I went on Dr. Phil and what? Why well, I went on Dr. Phil 
That hasn't even hit me. So much has just happened over and over. One of the reasons I love doing the show again is I can just like, I mean, wow, I can just reflect, man. You know what I mean? It's like people are moving so quick when they're ticking and talking, dude. And they're Instagramming. And they're YouTubing. But it's like, we got to just get back and ground, you know what I mean? Not a joke. That's my impression of Biden. Not joking around. Come on, dude. Putin's a bad dude. He's a bad hombre. So, I'll tell you about the Dr. Phil situation. Last year, and some of you may know this, I have a, a lawsuit filed with the Supreme Court in New York. New York. A manager, acting manager, who scouted me and then just held me on the line for months and months and months. Uh, and then they said, we're not going to work with you because you're white. The white man, the white man has had their time. Their time has come and has gone. And though we feel you fit the bill, and you have the talent to prevail, we will not work with the white man. And so I recorded the conversation. I got a lawyer. We're going to court. It's been hell. It's been a hell of a time. But it's a battle I'm going to fight, and I'm not going to stop. Because I think it's uh, destroying this country. I think identity politics and uh, this ra- new racial discrimination is uh, it's destroying the, co- the country. So, it's a hill I'm going to die on. I'll die on that hill. It's a great hill. Nobody dies on hills like I do. Nobody can die. Nobody can do it. Not even the Normandy people. You know these people, John, the Normandy. They storm Normandy, but there was no hill. They died on the beach because they're weak. But I'll die on a big, big hill. Big hill. So anyways, uh, uh, Dr. Phil got wind of it, and he called me, or his assistant called me. Um, and he said, uh, we want you to come on Dr. Phil. No, that's Bill Clinton. I, I'm getting my impressions mixed up. Well, I think Dr. Phil does sound a little bit like Bill Clinton. He sounds like Bill Clinton and who else? Dr. Phil. Bill Clinton and maybe just a slightly southern, more southern Bill Clinton. And so his assistant called me, and, and he sounds like Dr. Phil. So he must have found an assistant to sound just like him. And he said, we want you to come on the show. And so I flew to Los Angeles. I didn't want to do it. I was miserable. I had just gone through a breakup. I was depressed. I was getting bullied, bullied uh, by all sorts of people for pursuing this lawsuit it was a rough time it was a dark dark time for for old t-bone here but again it's part of my mission so die on a hill we shall flew out to los angeles and i got there and lo and behold uh it was basically a debate so it was me and i didn't know i didn't look up who was going to be there because this is a new thing I do. I, I a lot of people nowadays, especially comedians or actors, they're afraid. They're oh, I'm not going to go on that show because the podcast hosts used to date a woman who worked with the guy who played pool with a woman whose daughter went to school with a kid whose neighbor is Alex Jones, and so I'm not doing it. People really do that shit. It's really sad. Now, a upside of being canceled or people attempting to cancel you or ruin your life or keep you from working because of your skin color or your p- politics or whatever the hell it is, one of the upsides is you just don't give a shit anymore. I don't give a shit about anything anymore except sticking to my values, my close friends, my art, my dog, and mochas. So um, I didn't look up who I was going to be debating against. And the theme of the show is basically, (laughs) I can't can't fucking believe I'm saying this. I can't even believe I'm saying it. I think they changed the title ultimately, but originally the title was, is it okay to discriminate against white people? Or is it okay to be racist against white people? I think now they changed it to discrimination, a two-way street. I think that's what it, what it is. Um, 
So I didn't look up who I was debating against because... Let me just check this out. I didn't look up who I was debating against because if you believe in your values and you know how to articulate your points, then it doesn't really matter. You d- d- do you know what I mean? Like, it didn't matter who was on the show because they're going to be saying, yes, you can discriminate against white people, which is absurd, which is absurd. And so I got there and it was... Candace Owens, I'm walking down the hall, and there's Candace Owens. I'm like, oh, shit, she's on, I'm on her debate side. So I felt pretty good immediately because she's one of the most articulate people around these uh, these areas. Okay, everybody, facts don't give a shit about your feelings, right? Absolutely, Ben. Right. Absolutely. And this was brought to you by Express VPN. Use code Ben for twenty percent off. <laughs> but first. But first, Candace. <laughs> uh, she, I've heard her speak about this stuff m- multiple times, and she's incredibly articulate. And she's a uh, she's a wolf. She's a wolf. She's a she wolf. She she has uh, assertiveness and um, uh, art- articulation and and verbal linguistic power that I think most men will never have. Most men, most powerful men. So I I felt comfortable. I was like, oh, okay, yes, I feel, I felt safe. And then Amala, I'm sorry, I just always, always have a hard time with their last name because I'm white, because I'm white, man, and then I did the thing. I don't want to say your name wrong and be called racist. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a little more like Dr. Phil right there. I think we found it. I think we found it. There's a little bit of Hillbilly and Bill Clinton. Hillbilly Clinton. There we go. Man, if you just keep talking, you're going to find all sorts of things, man. There we are. Dr. Phil, can you be racist against a white person? Comedian Tyler Fisher. You should be a comedian. Um, Amala from PragerU. And she's going to be on the podcast in a few weeks. And we're going to talk about the episode, which is going to be great. So I'm sitting in the middle. So it's me. Candace and Amala. Or Amala. I'm sorry. Kamala, Amala, Kamala Harris. And I felt so safe. I felt so safe. And think about that for a second. Me, the white man, sitting in between two black women. Candace is black. Amala is half black. And she actually considers herself half white, half black where most people would just say she's black. So anyways, for the sake of conversation, a white man is sitting in between two unbelievably articulate and unbelievably successful black women. And that's my panel. So that alone, once you once you let that sink in, it made me realize, well, this is a very odd situation because you would think it would be all white people but it's not because in my experience and just what I've seen on the internet and stuff I I think I've heard more um, support for this type of thing um, from people who aren't white so the argument is like white people have it all, white people take it all, the white men are successful, then how then how do you have two very successful brilliant black women? How is that possible in racist America? So just that's where we were just starting off and I was the wheels were turning. I just this is so odd. It was amazing, but it's odd. And I was the least successful person on the panel. So if we're starting off the starting point is white men have it all. White men have all the privilege, all the power. Why wouldn't I just dominate my field? How am I in a position where instead I'm being fired for being white? I'm being told I will not be hired for being white. Can't do my podcast because you're white. Can't book you on this comedy show because you're white. And I'm not playing the victim. I'm doing okay, folks. I'm doing okay, folks. Corn pop. Give Give me the... Managing my pie, pop, pop, pop cast. It's a core pop cast. Come on. 
And then we, the opposition was, uh, I think, a critical race theory professor and then a second maybe diversity, yada, yada, insert fucking woke vocabulary words. So we start kind of breaking it down. Um, and it was surreal. To say the least, I grew up watching Dr. Phil. And so I'm like, what? And the last time I was in L.A., one of the last times, I met with Jim Carrey's manager. Because I'd been scouted every year by some acting manager or talent manager. So I met with Jim Carrey's uh, manager. And then now I'm back here talking about a lawsuit on Dr. Phil. So it's a bit of a mind fuck. A bit of a mind fuck. So, we start getting into it. Then Dr. Phil uh, comes to me and asks me about my my situation. And I just lost it, man. I started fucking crying. Which I don't cry very often. Um, New York City is kind of beating my soul. I'm 18 years old, just to give you an idea. And so that was... That was just really telling. It was a beautiful moment and a terrifying moment Moment to be like, all right, I'm, I'm now crying on Dr. Phil. Okay, I'm on Dr. Phil. Now I'm crying on Dr. Phil. And you're just thinking about how many people are going to see it and what the reaction might be. And so I got in my head a little bit. and I, I got it together, and I just continued to tell my story. And I talked about, you know, how this will affect children because I'm 36 and this is completely fucked with my head over the last 10 years. And um, has certain, certainly not uh, of late, but probably for the first 10, 12 years of my stand-up and acting and writing career has put sort of a limit on what I thought I was able to talk about or do. So I'm, I'm gathering my thoughts. And then I originally didn't know they were going to do this. They played the recording of the... Uh, of the manager telling me it's company policy to not hire white guys and laughing about it and everything. And the crowd gasped. And that was the most kind of love and support that I had felt since all of this has happened. Aside from like my two or three very, very, very close friends, you know, uh, showing some support. But it's mostly been, as far as the people that have uh, come up to me, it's been, what are you doing? You're crazy. Why would you do this? I can't believe you're suing. Drop the lawsuit. Just fucking give it up. You're racist. Yada, yada, yada. So then I kind of started crying again because I heard the crowd gasp and I was like, oh, they, they just acknowledged this isn't okay. And I'm so fucking brainwashed. To think that it is okay. Because when you're told over and over and over, oh, it's fine, you know. Oh, it makes sense that you were discriminated against. So, God, like that, but, and, and like, that's one of the things about human nature is like you don't, you need support. You just do, and you don't need that much. And so I felt, I felt so loved. I felt so loved. Um, so I'll show you a little uh, a little clip of the Dr. Phil right here. To a male comedian who says a management agency told him it's not the time for white men to get jobs. He caught that comment on tape. What else is on this recording? We're going to find out when we come back. Tyler Fisher, you've had a recent run-in with this affirmative action hiring problem that we're having right now. I worked with the agent who emailed me, and I said, why why no auditions, you know? And he just emailed me, and he wrote, tough out there for white dudes. And then uh, not long after, removed me from the roster. And I had a complete mental breakdown. I, I'm just thinking, how is this happening, and how are people so comfortable talking about it? Comedian Tyler Fisher 
claims he has been turned down by three agencies because they said they just weren't looking for white men to book at this time. Tyler, thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you. I do I identify as a Latino female now, so <laughs> uh, just adjust my pronouns. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I've been in the entertainment business for 17 years, and I, I think what we're not talking about is children right now. Thank God I had about five years where this was not happening, where race was not pounded over your head. <laughs> this is... Destroying people's lives. Yes. You know, the manager that told me, I can't work with you because you're white, he was, he was a pawn, you know? And so it's so sad because I feel so bad for kids who won't have that chance. They're going to go, oh, I'm told I'm white, so I'm not going to go for it. You know, what would you say to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, no matter what their race is? Should you, like, what would you, what would you actually tell them? You know, should you give your job up? And let me ask you directly, do you think it was justified for me to be told, we can't represent you, you don't have the chance to now compete for jobs because you're white? Yes or no, was that okay or was that not okay? I think that what is described yes, by no, you- Yes don't give me your little Well, no, like, let me finish. What, yes what is described no. by you, someone telling you that you can't get, get that job because you're white does not sound right to me. Well, it's let's also hear what was illegal, actually right? said. He's it's not just making this but up. Let, let me say he, this. He recorded the call with an agent. He claims turned him down for being white. So let's listen to the call. Is it a policy, like, explicit that they're not taking on any, like, white men? Or is it, like, case by case? On camera talent, stand up, probably not. No. Okay, so no, so no white men are allowed for on camera stuff. I guess it's, it's right now where it stands, but like, yeah, it could change in a year depending on if casting directors, that's not their feedback anymore, or not even casting directors, you know, studios, whatever it may be, where it's like, this is what we're looking for. I don't know. Uh, more diverse would be the actual. Yeah, yeah. Term. Right. It'll go so far until a white person will have to be the diverse hire. Which is happening. <laughs> Which yeah. is happening. There's, 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 there's racially discriminated stand-up comedy shows in New York City. I did a show the other day, and they said, are you doing the next show? And I said, yeah. The guy said, I didn't know you were gay. He said, this is a gays-only show. And so that's why Hollywood sucks right now, by the way, because they're not hiring based on talent. What do we do about heart surgeons, airplane pilots? Like, how far do we want to go with this? Do you want the best heart surgeon, or do you want somebody who you think may have had it bad as a kid, or maybe their great great grandfather. I mean, this is, it's ridiculous. I think it's important. Yeah. There you have it. It was a wild day, and Dr. Fell's a good guy. He's a good man. He pulled me aside after the show. We actually talked privately for quite a while, and he's so fed up with this stuff. He is so fed up with it. And like I said, I had no idea what, what was going to happen going into it. I just decided I'm going to do this and uh, take one for the team, I guess you can say. It certainly wasn't. It wasn't fun, you know. It wasn't fun. I had a lot of resistance doing it, but history will, history, history will define these moments. And I think history will be kind to those who spoke out against this stuff. So, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention about it. Yeah, it was it was an incredibly emotional uh, couple couple days. Flew there, flew back, and happy I went. Happy I went. It's good that it's out now. And I don't have to worry. But uh, the attacks were pretty wild when I just tweeted out. All I did was tweet out, "Hey, I got fired or not or not hired for." My skin color, this isn't okay. I want this to end, and I'm not settling in the lawsuit. And, man, I got ripped apart. I got a lot of support, so thank you for the support. But it's it really sums up the time we live in where you can be discriminated against. Simply say, I'm fighting this. It's not okay. It's not legal. And I'm taking these people to court and be called a racist and shut up, white boy, and all this stuff. It's wild. We live in an incredibly hypocritical moment right now it's a bizarre bizarre thing to witness 
and it's getting worse by the day. And a lot of people I know are are starting to notice it. This is how I know it's gone too far. I mean, I have friends that are all over the political spectrum, and I don't see my friends through a political filter. I don't think you should see anything through a political filter except politics, not people. I have friends that are starting to come to me and just say, this is, man, I'm getting attacked at the comedy clubs or I'm getting attacked at work and all this anti-white hate is out of control. And I could see them like, they're going to be, you know, whatever. They're going to, they'll vote with their fingers or whatever they say, vote with your fingers. Um, so, okay, I am now, uh, first of all, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is episode one. I haven't done one in eight months. I was definitely a little nervous about it. I was a little resistant to uh, getting back to it. I really wanted to, but this is the most vulnerable medium that I that I uh, speak in. And I'm used to just doing jokes and edited stuff and very, you know, cut down quick clips. So this is longer. It's more vulnerable. So like I said, if you like, you know, if you like this longer form, this is for you. If you don't, that's fine. I don't really care. You just don't watch it. Just don't write any negative comments, okay? Um, speaking of negative comments, I want to say this one last thing. I just did a video. Uh, uh, I did a, a girlhood video where I'm putting on makeup. And it it went viral and uh, on Twitter, all these people that were hating on it. But so many people shared it that it's got like almost a million views now. So thank you to all the people that hated that video and called me a misogophobe or something. There's some new word. Uh, let me just see what it's called. A misogophobe, misogynistophobe or something. It's like a, I, I don't even, it's. They're saying basically that I hate women because I'm making fun of a man or poking fun of a man who's dressing as a woman. I, You know what? Let's talk about this next episode. My head's going to freaking explode because it's too much to even comprehend that you could be attacked for hating women, for standing up for women because you love women so much that you don't want men to take over what's so beautiful and pure and unique to women, like beauty and makeup and boobs so I'm going to move over to locals now okay thanks for listening thanks for watching please subscribe to my YouTube channel my Rumble channel follow me on all the social medias follow me on communist TikTok and Marxist Twitter whatever I don't know uh, what I'm talking about now but I'm going to go to locals here and if you want to watch this uh, extra part of the podcast where I answer questions, people tell me new impressions they want me to do. Uh, I'm going to be working on a Theo Vaughn, I think, on this one somebody asked me to do. Um, you can just sign over to Locals, tylerfisher.locals.com. The lowest you could pay is $5 a month. Not a bad, not a bad, not a bad price tag. So thanks. I love you. And I'll see you on Locals.